still trying to push for the the Ruka book. Yep, yep. You came through and took so many amazing different images, huh? Yeah, I think eleven years going to North Shore, Jeez. taking pictures of um, you know all the Ruka advocates. There's like, I like to tell people there's like eighty. 80 people of Ruka mm -hmm. advocates to go out there, like 20 fighters, 20 skaters, 20 surfers, and yeah. 20 street. I just round it off. You know? Yeah, yeah. We all stay in like five to six houses along the beach and, and intermingle with everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the coolest vibes I've ever been in, you know, been invited to. I mean, you, you're, you're, kicking it with the best of the best all around the world from all over the world yeah it's everybody gets up early and goes and works out together yeah and then, uh you know at, at kai's gym and then mm -hmm. everybody goes to uh you know do the sauna and the ice bath <laughs> and then we all go back to the beach or, yeah or and have barbecues on the beach like it's one of the best yeah best parts of my life and best parts of my years during those mm -hmm. years like those weeks in Hawaii were always like definitely the highlights of my years when I was yeah. doing that. It's something only Pat Tenori could like bring together that type of humans. Yeah. Like from all different walks of life, everyone gets along. We all like have a great time and we all grow in just all kinds of ways. And that's something yeah. so unique to Ruka, I feel. Yeah. And I thought, I've thought about it cause I know a lot of people, you know, I've mm. met thousands of people throughout the years and, Mm -hmm. I thought about it like like you said, only he could do that, yeah. and it's true. Like I don't I don't know anybody else that could bring mm -hmm. together all these different types of people, yeah. and they're really different. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, the craziest street artists from all over the world, yeah. you know, skateboarder, yeah. you know, rowdy kids, yeah, <laughs> surfers from all over the world that have no fear, yeah, and you have fighters, you know, guys that mm -hmm. get in the ring to get punched in the face and get choked <laughs> out or out, you know like yeah there's a lot of different stuff going on there yeah and um only pat could do it like you said you yeah know? shout out to pat yeah you, brother love pat Pat's that's a bad a, a lot of opportunities that yeah that, you know yeah a lot of other people me too get. me as well you know he's done an incredible job with everything that he does and so giving you know and sharing Oh, there you go. You got the tattoo on the guy's head, huh? Yeah, and that's somebody holding up my birthday cake. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Yep. <laughs> just scan through. We have a couple more, and then we'll take some questions as we just round out the hour here as we go through. So if you want to talk on any, just kind of have me stop, and we'll just, like, look through these incredible photos. If you... Rest in peace, Meg Miller. Yeah. Oh. And He's talented, absolutely. Rest in peace, Big Nip. Wow, dude. LA legend. Yeah, what a beautiful shot. Yeah, it's trip. A lot of people got that tattooed on them too, and uh, wow. they did a mural of that here in LA. A guy named Downtown Daniel mm -hmm. did a mural of that down here in, uh, at the Container Yard. He killed it like, with paintbrushes, and it took him like. Maybe four or five days with this little regular ass paintbrushes. It looks like, a, you know, it looks like the photo. Wow. It's incredible. That's incredible. It's beautiful. Oops, sorry. Going the other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nipsey's tattoo. That's our boy Pepper, another homeless guy that we hang out with. I've known him for 25 years. Wow. We, uh, we Me and Cartoon did a lot of. Um, like outreach with the homeless and and people that were addicted to drugs and and a lot of people that were felons they would come out and they didn't have no place to go or you know because one of the first questions people ask you on a job inter job interview or application mm -hmm. is have you been convicted of a felony so the second you say yes or you check off that box that means okay you you can walk out the door right now because you're not going to get the job so a lot of us like even Pepper, you know, he, we, we would have him work with us, you know, at, at events because, you know, we're in downtown, there's, you know, skid row and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we would tell, we'd tell him, Hey Pepper, you know, stall out all the homeless homies tonight. Like, you know, you know, this is your area right here. Just make sure your people 
that come through, you know, they're not tripping, you know, because they're yeah. mentally yeah. schizophrenic or whatever. Yeah. He was, you know, at the towards the front and just have it locked down be like, hey, keep it moving, you know, this is my people. And so he was a good dude, and or he still is, you know, but we, we, we took care of him a lot, you know. Yeah. We put him to work as much as we can. We always yeah. kept him fed, clothed, mm -hmm. and as well as Damn. a lot of uh, other guys that we were regulars with. And then, like, with the, the homies that would get out of prison, we gave them, you know, jobs at the warehouses or, you know, wherever we thought that they could shine, we gave them jobs mm -hmm. that would fit them. And, That's cool. You know, without judging them on their, on their uh, you know, conviction records. And stuff. Right. That's wonderful. I mean, God is being a part of the community, right? <laughs> They're part of the community there. Yeah, exactly. Here's a classic shot oh, of Snoop Dogg. Yep. Snoop Dogg, Be Real, Dr. Dre, Daz, and Nate Dogg Jeez. playing at, uh, playing video games at Encore Studios in Burbank. Wow. I went there. To, this was my first day I went to shoot uh, Snoop Dogg in 19, 1998. Mm -hmm. And they were all there doing a, a record. And I took B Real with me because me and B were kicking it every day. So I was like, hey, B, you want to roll with me to the studio to shoot Snoop. He's like, yeah, hell yeah, let's go. And all those guys were there. All the <laughs> LA legends were those hip hop fools. Wow. So th this is that angle you were kind of talking about lower down and amongst the crew and kind of everything like that, shooting the low rider soft thing. Yeah. So you can get like the full um, view of like how high they're really going. Gotcha. On the other one, you couldn't really tell, but this yeah. is how you could tell how high these cars are launching. You know, it's kind of like uh, hood transformers, you know? <laughs> that's and cool. You get the car this high, it's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Wow. Some tattoos. This was the day I was walking by down here on Skid Row, and there was a uh, somebody who, I think either died right there or in the toilet and the cops were there waiting for the coroner to come. And uh, you see the plastic bag by their feet. Mm -hmm. That was that was like in between me and the body and the the cop there, the African-American one, he came over and he I thought he was going to come up and say, hey, you know, don't take pictures. But he walked over and he kicked the bag out of the way and then he walked back and hung out with his there's a partner there against the wall. Wow. That's cool. So it was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, directing. Yeah. yeah. Nate Dog, rest in peace. Cover this is your newest book that's out right now, right? If people want to get that, is that yeah. that's on Amazon, correct? Yeah, it's everywhere. Okay. My site, Amazon. Okay. Epic. Stephen okay. LA. So sick. It's uh, Tito Ortiz at, uh, at Freddy's Gym. Shit. Cartoon and Big Lefty. This, this is our last image here as we kind of just go through and then we'll start taking some of the questions, Esteban, as we just wrap up here. And we appreciate it. So let, let's just go. So it was, do you always shoot black and white? If so, is there a reason why? Why are so um, many ninety percent looks like our black and white, correct? Yeah, I would say ninety mm -hmm. ninety percent at the most at the least of my photos are black okay. and white. But I just um I don't know why I always just gravitated towards that look mm -hmm. instead of the color, you know. Yeah. I didn't uh, you know like what you do with the colors is is like, you know, you're shooting in paradise, you know, yeah. and these like incredible you know colors and at the same time when you're shooting color you can't really tell when it was mm -hmm. it could be the 90s or it could be 2000 you know, mm -hmm. you know waves don't change with the with the times you know they yeah. just have that it's like a classic thing whereas when you're shooting with colors with people and and through different times, you can tell the era by by the color and by the um, you know the background. Yeah. So I feel like when you're shooting it in black and white, you can't really tell 
when it was, you know, because mm. like you, you see like older color film, like you can always tell when you see a 70s film or a Polaroid or 80s and and you could tell by what the people were wearing and, and, and that type of thing. So to me, the black and white is more classic and it's it makes you focus on the image and not like mm -hmm. you know, when was it, where was that and this and that. You're like, Okay, let's just get down and look at the photo, you know? Absolutely. I love that. That's a great explanation to it. So what was the most nerve wracking situation for shooting you found yourself in? That De Niro Pacino shoot when the cameras weren't working. <laughs> and the two, my two like biggest, uh, like kind of like idols uh -huh. that I've watched and everything growing up. Like to me, I thought I would never, yeah, that's incredible. Sorry about that. That's incredible. To me, it was like, you know, I never thought I'd be anywhere near those guys, you know, after watching The Deer Hunter and Raging Bull and The Godfather and, you know, every movie that they did, Mean Streets and all that, I was like, oh, there's no way I could even, I'd ever be near these guys in any kind of way. Uh, and the, together, the fact that have them there, together is insane. <laughs> Like at that time, I think only five people had shot them together. Wow. Ever in history. So and it's an iconic photo now. It's crazy. Yeah. Now it's, you know, the cover of that movie and, and the fact that my stuff wasn't working, my mm. equipment and, you know, if that, if that camera hadn't clicked that, the last camera, I would, what could I have done? Yeah. You know, I would have, there's nothing you can say. Yeah. It would have been a story instead of having the photo. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So, so um as we just do you use any type of um off camera flash or you like to just use natural light when shooting? I always like to use natural light too. because mm -hmm. uh I like to my photos I like them to be is like what you see is what you get. You yes. Know? So if you're if, if if you're using natural light, like that's what I was seeing. Right? Yeah. So you're getting what I was seeing at that time. I didn't like you know, put anything extra in there to make it something else, you know, mm -hmm. actually a photo of that one second, I captured that one second of time exactly the way it was. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see it, you know, filtered out or Photoshopped to death or, Absolutely. you know, 150 ways. It was just, yeah. what you see is what you, yeah, absolutely and and here's our last question what were your influences when you first started shooting who who or what were your influences uh, my dad was the my first influence and then uh you know my my friends and the people i was around you know the low riding mm -hmm. culture and hip-hop mm -hmm. you know because that's what i was i was low riding i i had my car and uh 1989 i bought my car and i started working on 91 so wow i didn't start wow. taking pictures until the 90s so i was already well into low riding and i was already you know mm -hmm. going around the world with hip-hop so me shooting those i was just that's what was inspiring me is where i was and what i was doing mm -hmm. i love it time, you know, there yeah well that was amazing, Esteban. Um, just on like one last question, you've gone into directing and kind of producing videos and you've you've transferred just beautifully into it of like how I've seen some of the videos of Defer as well as some music videos and different things. What were some of your like challenges or like things you learned as going from photo to video? Um. I would say the challenges are uh, is the editing, you know, because mm. you do good footage and if it's not edited right, you know, it ruins it. And mm -hmm. then uh, the other thing would be, um, you know, on, on, on shooting, like on a shoot day when you have jobs and stuff, just sticking to the schedule because it's yeah. so hard to get, yeah. you know, those shots done and it's like, you're like people are like, hey, uh, you know, can you can you take all these ideas on this yeah. piece of paper and into this incredible film? And you're like, okay, well, let me see. And then you're reading stuff, and you're like, okay, and you got to translate that into your head. Uh -huh. 
their sentence and make it look like something cool when it comes out on the screen. So mm-hmm. that's like, you know, a big challenge and people, people just think it's so easy because, yeah. you know, people make it look easy. You know, they're right. like, oh yeah, he could do it. <laughs> He's just a regular guy like me. So I should be able to do it. And then you, you see like their versions of your stuff or, and, and you're like, man, why is, why is <laughs> What is yeah. it, you know? Yeah. But Absolutely. it's really challenging to do uh, the video or filming type, yeah. type of uh, a lot. Of, to me, it seems like it's a lot harder because you're capturing something like like live in, in a 360. Mm-hmm. Where you're not just capturing one frame at one angle. Yeah. You're capturing the whole movement live as as it's happening and and at every angle you know you're getting people's good sides bad sides you know yeah all the flaws of, of the lighting of the you know everything mm-hmm. when it's a moving picture that you can you can move around and catch different angles when it's a one frame type of thing and you can kind of cheat with it mm-hmm. beautiful i love that answer that's great um any last words esteban as we just sign off here not for me. Just a big thank you to you and uh, and Canon, you know, and Ruka, bringing us together. Pat to Nor, the whole family over there. Absolutely. And uh, I see Brophy on here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank thank you so much for joining us, Esteban, and the insight and being able to share your images. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and take care. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.